No awkward intro today. This is AWIC number four. As a, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> as, as established by you. <laughs> yeah, no, no awkward intro, yeah. Yeah, well, here we are, AWIC number four. Welcome, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this week has been slammed. It's Black Friday week, but accountability. We're here making this, even yeah. though I really probably shouldn't be. But hey, we're going to make it happen. So uh, obviously it's Black Friday week. Yeah. Um, you excited for the, for the rush? If it's anything like last year, not really. Uh, there was a lot of people just in our showroom last year, not to mention all the orders that came in. Yeah, it's crazy that we've gotten to the point where like the showroom business on like a Black Friday yeah. is actually something to where we need to have like designated people like handling that all day yeah pretty much it was me and like one other person in there the entire day and you guys were getting killed I we remember. were I, I think at one point we needed a third person uh right around i think it was like right after about the lunch rush yeah no so. it, it's really cool and obviously whenever you guys get to come in and shop it's also really awesome to be able to share kind of products with you guys on the spot and you get some really good deals yeah. I, I really have to say like we run a pretty good operation. I, I think so. I, I would be happy to shop with us. Yeah. Um, which is, that's always been kind of like my baseline for anything with the business. It's hard with discounts because there's always going to be somebody cheaper in the world. That's just right. how, how things work. If you're selling a product, someone will be there to undercut you. Yeah. Like it, It's inevitable. I mean, just, just look at every like speed cube in like a shopping mall. Yeah. You know, it's essentially a May long that's like a dollar Instead of like, you know, whatever a mail-on goes for, what, $3? So. Yeah, or conversely, remember when we came across the Chi carbon fiber cubes at that yeah. one mall when we were with Timmy? That was insane. So we saw that the Chi like two by two carbon fiber and three by three carbon fiber for like 25 bucks, Yeah, which is like criminal how, <laughs> how marked up that is. And uh, I don't think that the guy that was working the kiosk really appreciated my cube trivia or my, uh, <laughs> or, or me pretty much solving all the cubes and talking about how expensive that they were. Right. Uh, but, well, that was actually kind of Timmy, but I was definitely hopping in a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's – I love Black Friday season. It's always, like, the rush is a thrill. Um, you know, we we used to get to a point where we'd come in every single night after Thanksgiving. So we'd come in at, like, 1030 or 11 at night, work until we pretty much couldn't work any longer, come in Friday again in the morning. So you'd be working until, like, typically 4 and right. we all go to IHOP afterwards. That was like our thing. And IHOP at 4 a.m. is a really weird place to be, by the way. Is it, does it kind of give you like Waffle House vibes? It's like empty and <laughs> the service still manages to not be great. So, but yeah, I, I remember I would get like Brussels sprouts and like chicken, fender, chicken tenders, which is a really weird IHOP. Right. Yeah. Why? Why? I don't know. It's good. It's good. So Brussels sprouts at IHOP, don't sleep on that. Um, or maybe maybe it was Denny's. I don't know. I kind of either way, what cheese. you're ordering is wrong. <laughs> well, I, like objectively <laughs> wrong. It, it tastes right though. <laughs> it should not. So we don't do that anymore. It's cool that we've gotten to a point where we have enough staff and we're also super efficient to where we can come in the morning of early and then we just bring in food and stuff throughout the day. And we try to make it as fun for people as possible. Right. And I have to say we have a really good group of people that we work together with. And, uh, you know, no one complains. We all just get it done. And the cool yeah. thing is we all align on the value that for customers, like we, we look at it to where it doesn't matter if it's Black Friday. Orders need to get out on time. Right. And we try not to use that as an excuse. So right. we're, we're building cubes all day. We're coding cubes all day. We're, yeah. we're just slinging cubes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, really excited about that. Um, one thing I am really nervous about, though, is the, the emails because, you know, we were talking earlier about, like, yeah. Address changes and order modifications are always a thing, but when it's Black Friday and people are in a hurry to add stuff to their cart yeah. and check out, it's a mess because we do our best to try to organize tickets. Like we'll skim through them and look for ones that have like address changes or order changes, and we try to tackle those first. Right. Um, or like time sensitive ones, we'll have like a dedicated person for that on Black Friday, but you can't always catch them all because at the rate we're yeah. shipping orders and the rate the emails are coming in and the live chats and the right. phone calls and then the Facebook messages and then the Instagram DMs. It's a lot to keep up with. And like, right. there's always that one order that gets shipped and then we have multiple pickups throughout the day. So yeah. then it gets missed and it's really hard to deal with. Yeah. So and double check your address, please. Yeah. Double check it. And like, 
with emails too comes uh, or with Black Friday comes emails about you know returns. Uh, you know, not every kid is going to be satisfied with what they get. You know, yeah. there's a with uh, most cubes nowadays. There's so many different versions. Uh, it's bound to happen that a parent or the kid will ask or select the wrong one, which means we'll end up getting a return. And usually, you know, everything is fine in the end. But speaking of returns in general, what do you think this year's most return cube is going to be? I could tell you. I don't have to. I don't have to guess. I can tell you what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, so, well, and, that, and that's where I will say, like, the ninety-day returns are really important for that reason. That like people right. are doing lots of Christmas shopping now, so it must. Our goal is to make it feel good to where if you buy it now, you have plenty of time right. for it to be like open and either not wanted or you know Santa brought it as well right. or whatever happens. And uh, but yeah, so so for the returns, Tornado version three. Any version, yeah. MGC two by two, and yeah. probably again fourteen. Yeah. So those are like based on analytics I was looking at earlier, actually, because right. we get so many inundated, actually, with with emails <laughs> um, of just defective Tornado version threes, MGC two by twos, and again fourteens. I think ends up being like a buyer's remorse type thing, or people just decide that they just would rather get something cheaper or, or whatever it is. Right. Um, yeah. But those Tornado version 3s, man, are always breaking pieces. Yeah. Magnets are coming loose. And it's been an issue ever since it's come out. And I just can't believe that she has not addressed it. Yeah, I bought, I, I think I have like three Pioneer versions uh, just because I got the first one. I loved it. When we got the sample months before it was released, you know, Cameron had me try it out. And I pretty much fell in love with the cube right away. Yeah. And so... You know, every every so often I would ask him, it was like, any news? Is it coming out? Uh, but I ended up liking it so much that I was like, okay, well, you know, if anything were to happen, let's say I drop the cube or something, something breaks, you know, I would have, you know, backups to use and I would use them as warm-up cubes. But the three that I have have had no issues. Yeah. The core hasn't uh, broken, the screws haven't stripped, no magnets have fallen out. But it seems like if you got it in the very first batch that came out, Everything is fine. Every other batch after that has had so many different issues. Yeah. Like I think probably the most common issue is probably the magnets. I would say they I'd just agree. they won't like stay in the in the edge pieces. They just fall out. I replaced four cubes today alone. Me <sighs> doing emails, uh, all for that issue. God, that's crazy. I, I think the problem is that these manufacturers, like me as a business, I understand the concept that. You bought the cube from Speed Cube Shop, so it's right. not really your problem that Chi is not doing good right. quality control. So we replace it either way, whether Chi reimburses us or not, which happens pretty much never yeah. for any factory, not just Chi. And um, or the worst part is these factories, like their idea of a resolution is, oh, we'll send you in a new part. So it's like, okay, so we're going to wait a month for right. a part to get here from China. Then we have to ship the part to the customer, and if they live overseas, I could take two weeks. Yeah. It's just not a good resolution, so we just usually bite the bullet and do whatever it has to be done to replace it, and then we deal yeah. with the loss. But yeah, those Tornado version 3s, I think it's a combination, because like the MGC 2x2 is the big example of this. I think it's partially the user, because I do notice a trend when I reply to emails and stuff about that. It's generally people, corner twisting, right. is like nine times out of 10, or they yank out a corner or whatever it is. And right. I have tried so many PSAs to advise people don't yank on corners. Right. Even as far as putting labels on the outside of the box at one point, and it just didn't really fix anything. So yeah, yeah and that's, oh, man, I had, I had a really good point. What was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I think that's just the issue with a lot of these cubes is that, oh, that's what I was gonna say, is that nothing like, it really crushes my soul because I, I, I've been doing a lot of like journaling lately and self-reflection. It's been kind of a, a bad year, but um, I look back to when this business started 14 years ago. Wow. And all of the work that's gone into it and like it's not easy. I mean, I know you've seen and commented about the amount of stuff that goes into making this yeah. all happen. And just because someone makes it look easy doesn't mean it is. And when I get these one-star reviews across the internet or people leaving the most, like people, it's, it's sad to me how some people are so quick to just assume that you're gonna screw them 
right. or not help. Like I get scathing emails that yeah. were a scam, uh, like our cubes suck. And it's like, we don't manufacture these. Yeah. Um, but it's like, let me at least tell you I'm not gonna help you before you like ream me right. online. And what's also crazy is all the people that leave bad reviews and don't even contact us. Like at least some review platforms, uh, like Trustpilot, you can see if it's a verified purchase. Right. You can see their order info. And like, I'll look up their email and no one's ever contacted us right. by phone, by live chat, by anything. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I'm not really a, like it takes a lot for me to leave someone a bad review. Actually, right. I had a horrible experience at a restaurant a few weeks ago. And even then I give them a three. So I try to be generous with it and give right. fair feedback for customers. But I just can't imagine like not giving a business the opportunity to fix a problem. And right. they'd rather just go online and leave a bad review. I do think it's kind of like a tactic though. Because some people think that if they leave the bad review, you now right. feel inclined to bend over backwards and do whatever you can for them. But in a way, it almost does the opposite because it's like, you've already given us the bad review. Right, exactly. So like, not saying I'm not gonna help you, but I don't feel inclined to like bend over backwards. Like we'll always fix it per our policy. Right. But there are customers where like, I had one today where people have missed the our last BOGO sale and yeah. they're, they're, they've missed it by a pretty large margin at this right. point. But it's like, hey, you're being respectful, you're, you're a good customer, and whatever, I'll, I'll honor it for you. Right. But it's just, we have so many great customers, I, don't, I try to not fixate on the 0.01% right. of people that are negative, but they are the loudest. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine part of those bad reviews aren't even like necessarily our fault in like terms of like shipping, you know? Oh my God. We're like, as Don't even get me started. As soon as it goes... Do I look as triggered as I feel <laughs> right now? As soon as it goes to whatever shipping carrier, you know, is, you know, delivering it, once it leaves us, we can't really control how fast it oh, gets to you. Dude. So, like, if you've ever had a package that's been delayed, I'm going to say probably nine times out of ten, it's not, you know... The, the business's fault, it's usually, you know, whatever uh, carrier service you're using, like USPS, maybe they're backlogged or their <sighs> systems went down. But the problem is a lot of people will just assume that it's on the business. And so they'll be like, oh, shipping was slow. And it's like, we, we couldn't control that. I, I do think that the businesses have a certain responsibility to offer shipping services that are good, incredible. Right. But it's such a catch-22 because... Our overseas customers, for example, I pulled a shipping service that we had called ePacket. It was cheap, like four or five dollars to most right. countries for most order sizes, but it would take like seven to 21 business days, which I right. realize is kind of a large gap, but it just varied so much by country. Sometimes right. it would take four days, sometimes it would take all 21. Sometimes it takes longer because there's customs processing delays yeah. that again, like there are just so many variables with shipments, whether it be domestic or, or overseas. And I actually pulled the shipping service in favor of Passport, which costs a little bit more, but is so much more reliable. Right. I'm like, if you look at our one star reviews, I will tell you that the vast, vast, vast majority of them, they're all about damaged products, defective products, right. or late shipments, or missing shipments. And it's like, we do what we can, but it is really sickening to me that after the COVID pandemic, all these mail carriers like FedEx, USPS, UPS, they right. suspended their, their delivery guarantees. So like the only shipping service that's currently guaranteed, meaning that if it doesn't arrive in the advertised transit time, we'll actually get a reimbursement that we can pass on to the customer is FedEx overnight. Really? Okay. And, and I think UPS overnight too. We don't, we don't use that though. Mm. I think it's called UPS next day. But yeah, like they're, they're two day, they're three day, <laughs> all suspended. Wow. And it's just like wild to me how COVID was such a cop out for so many of these big companies right. to just be like bad service. Right. And, and just not do things. Yeah. Just but, make it easier on themselves, which in turn affects, you know, every consumer. Well, they're so big, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like right. FedEx, for example, is so big, it, it kills the small guys like us because we're having to compensate for these right. multi-billion dollar companies, which is like, frankly, disgusting. Yeah. But it's hard. I, I, I mean, that's where like, I, I laugh when I, people always say that like, because you own a business, you must be like super wealthy. Right. It's like, dude, <laughs> My entire life savings is literally in that warehouse. <laughs> and um, luckily I love what I do, so it offsets it, but like, right. it is stressful. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said it, it was all sunshine and rainbows, because it definitely isn't. Right, and you know, if every business person 
was successful, I feel like more people would be like business majors. They'd be starting their own startups and stuff. And I know at one point, someone said something about you owning like multiple, like really high end sports cars. Oh my cars. God. You're going there. All right. All right. We're going to go there. Yeah. So PSA, I'm actually not, um, apparently my, I shouldn't be giving any business talk or advice because, um, according to a certain cube store owner, I'll, I'll say this was kind of like relayed to me. So I didn't hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, but I can remember like the paraphrasing, but okay. So I guess the paraphrase, if Cameron, would sell, would stop buying Lamborghinis and Ferraris, that's what it was, Yeah. plural, Lamborghinis and plural Ferraris, and went to business school, I would actually have a good business. Yeah, which is... I love my Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Right, right. Yeah. But, like... I don't have Lamborghinis and Ferraris, by <laughs> the way. The thing way. is, is, like, if you had Lamborghinis, plural, and Ferraris, plural... Yeah. Wouldn't that mean your business is very successful? You would think, or which would mean debt. either that you have gone to business school or obviously don't need it. Well, business is weird because I I dropped out of college after doing my general education, and I, I actually I started at a business school, Cal State Northridge. That lasted a semester. Then I went just to a junior college, and it just. I don't know. I think that with how the world is now with the internet and stuff, right? I think that there's a place for school, um, but I do think that a lot of it can be, I think that experience is more important. And the fact that yeah. I started the business at 14 years old, I've had a lot of time to figure things right. out. <laughs> and that's where when people also like look at the fact that I, I'm grateful, I'm able to drift, I'm able to road race, and um, you know, it's an expensive hobby, but the right. fact that I can afford it, one, there's a lot more expensive hobbies. There always are. Right. But like, I've been doing this business for 14 years. Yeah. If I couldn't afford to do my hobby, right. my passion, outside of cubing, of course, that'd be kind of an issue. Yeah. I, I think that would be a sign, you know, that maybe what you're doing is not the right thing. But clearly, it's it's working. Well, and like one of my friends does, um, and like he he has his own business, but for him, it's more of like, he just does it because it's better than working for somebody else. Right. But, you know, it, it's different because, like, when you have families and stuff like that, right. it changes the dynamic. And that's where I'm actually – the whole cubing thing is a really just – owning a business in general, I shouldn't just say cubing, is a very nerve-wracking prospect because I'm getting to an age now where, like, we're talking about kids, family, and, like, actual real-life stuff. And it's scary, man. Like having to learn about like mortgages Ugh. and paying taxes. That's not new, but no. it's, it's just life is hitting and uh, you just always wonder when you own a business because you're the last person to get paid. Right. Like there's been several times where I, I don't even take a paycheck because I'd rather just use it to buy cubes. Right. And now that I have hard bills. Right. Can't always do that. So it's, it's, it's scary. <laughs> Keeps on your toes. <laughs> it, what's really funny is that I feel like the majority of our audience is like nowhere near that age to even like Enjoy understand. It. Enjoy it. Yes. Embrace Enjoy it while you youth. can. Yeah. I, in some ways it is kind of sad because I look back to like my childhood and starting a business at 14 was a catch 22. Right. It's great that now I'm in a position to where I have, a, I work a lot of hours, but it's flexible hours like right today i'm gonna spend some time with family but probably work until one in the morning right. but i can do that right whereas um my friends that didn't have businesses they had more fun in high school like going to car meets going to the movies paintballing right. whatever it was and i was stuck at home packing orders and answering emails and stuff yeah but now i'm doing the cool stuff and right. they're stuck at a desk exactly so it's like paid off but I do feel like in some ways my childhood was kind of like I willingly gave it away. Yeah. And I do sometimes, I don't have regret, but it is just kind of like, ah, you know, I'm still in my 20s, so yeah. still young. But like whenever I hear, like I meet some of these people, like Sam, and yeah. he's like, what he's like, 17? 16. 16, 17. I die. There. I die a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> 16? Like, geez, man. It feels like, yeah. it feels like just yesterday that I was in high school. But yeah, like we actually just had my 10 year high school reunion last weekend. 
that was that one hit. That one hit. Like Father Time is a cruel guy. <laughs> but yeah, it's I don't know. I guess enjoy it, have fun. I mean, it's just crazy though the journey that like I. It feels like so much has happened. I mean, I think back to the days of like gas assisted cube for you cubes. Yeah. I mean, uh, V cubes, Rubik's.com DIY kits, yeah. Diane cubes, the Guhongs, you know, it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. Just to make you feel a little bit older. Oh, man. When, let's see, you started the business in 2009. Uh, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it to me. I was seven. Man, pretty much still in diapers. Pretty much. That's crazy. <laughs> Is there anything like, we, sh we should like wrap up with? Uh, do we want to talk about any? We, we can hint on this. That's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. Do we want to talk about the big hint or anything? Yeah, we'll save some topics for next week. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'll let you say it. I don't want to. I tend to talk too much and I'll, okay. give, I'll give too much away. Okay. I will try to make this engaging while also not revealing everything. But uh, Big news coming to Australia. There, I said it. <laughs> That was pretty much it, yeah. Um, so, if you're in Australia, I mean, two thumbs up. Four thumbs up. <laughs> so, I think we'll wrap there. Yeah, we're looking forward to shipping out all of your orders, touching base next week, and seeing how it all went. We'll talk about yeah. kind of how Black Friday went, Cyber Monday, and uh, a bunch of other topics then. So, if there's anything that you want us to cover specifically, feel free to leave your topic ideas in the comments below. We'll definitely take them into consideration. So, thanks a lot for tuning in this week, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. All right. See ya. Take care.